This next story is one that I wish we didn't have to cover again. We first talked on this program about the Al Jazeera reporters who have been imprisoned in Egypt back in January. And we covered it again in February with Christian Amanpour. The journalists should have been released by now, but instead they've been put on trial and accused of aiding terrorists. So this is what we're seeing. Journalists in cages for using their cameras and microphones and notebooks. It's awful. It's simply awful. Ever since they were detained, which was back in December, Al Jazeera and its competitors have been campaigning for the release of the men there. And now in a new twist, CNN journalists are helping out by doing something that frankly I've never seen done before. They've been doing live reports on Al Jazeera about the trial because Al Jazeera's own reporters aren't allowed in the country. Think about it this way. The journalists who would normally be covering the trial are the ones on trial. CNN correspondent Sarah Seidner told me about this remarkable arrangement. Sarah, thanks for joining me from Abu Dhabi. Thanks for having me on the show, Brian. And typically, CNN and Al Jazeera compete every day. So how did this arrangement come about where you were on their air telling their viewers about this trial? Um, they contacted CNN. They talked with the manager. Um, it did go up the chain. It was a discussion. Um, and then I was brought into the discussion. And ultimately, you know, I was told, look, this is up to you. You know what's going on on the ground. Uh, you know uh, certain things that we may not know. Let's, let's talk about this and see um, if this makes sense uh, to do this, if there are any other concerns that you might have. And I, and I talked to the crew I was with, and, you know, we decided that it was the right thing to do. Um, of course, they identified me as a CNN correspondent um, mm -hmm. on Al Jazeera Air. And was it a, you know, was it a strange thing to have happened? I was surprised when I got the initial email uh, saying that, uh, would you do a, a live uh, report for Al Jazeera. At first, I, I thought it was a mistake and then realized uh, what, what had happened and, and how this all sort of came about. Um, and I was, I was happy to do it. And one of our colleagues, uh, Reza Saya, was helping out again this week with reports as well. Um, it, it, I guess this underscores the gravity of what's going on there, that I can't remember this happening before with two networks helping each other out. Can you recall a time where this has happened? No, I, I can't. I know that Lise Doucette from the BBC um, also did uh, a report before I did one as well, mm -hmm. so I know they also were asked uh, and agreed. But I think what's happened is uh, because of the situation and because the situation is so unusual, I certainly have never been in this position. Uh, many of the other journalists were surprised to see me popping up um, on Al Jazeera that I know uh, in Egypt. Um, but it just felt like for, I think, all of the different networks, if doing straight reporting, um, telling the story, uh, what's happening there. Competition is one thing, but they looked beyond that and thought that it was a fair thing to do at this point. The trial has been adjourned for, for several weeks now. What, what, can we, what do we know about what's being done to help uh, the men that are, that are being held there now for months? Yeah, I had a conversation with Mr. Gresta's brother, uh, who is there. We know that the family members are there, some of them staying there at their own expense, um, and, and plan to stay throughout um, this entire ordeal. Um, Peter Gresta's brother mm. talked about just how difficult this has been for the family, sort of uh, tearing the family apart, seeing uh, the conditions that he and, and the others are in right now. But we know that the embassies are involved, the Australian mm. embassy. Uh, Mohamed Fahmy is both a Canadian and Egyptian uh, citizen, so the Canadian embassy also involved and they're saying uh, we were able to talk to them they were in cages uh, in court which is how it's done in Egypt it takes people aback sometimes when they see that but that is how uh, trials unfold there and you've you've seen you know the leaders of Egypt in those same kinds of cages um, mm -hmm. and they talked about the fact that they were getting help from their embassies but they needed much more support from the governments um, many people cannot understand why they are still in jail and will be in jail for so long now it's been more than a month Brian it's such a disturbing thing for any journalist to see the pictures of fellow journalists in cages. Sarah, thank you for informing us about it. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on again.